Guys, welcome to the podcast. Before we get into this episode, I want to thank the sponsors of the podcast. I want to thank Go Hunt Insider. Remind you guys that it's application season. Go to gohunt.com forward slash J Scott. You're going to get a $50 Go Hunt Gear Shop gift card just for signing up. I also want to thank my friend Cody Nelson of, of uh, the Go Hunt Gear Shop. The optics department, he's the manager over there. If you guys are looking to buy any optics at all, whether it be binos, spotting scopes, rifle scopes, range finders, tripods, anything, give Cody a call, 702-847-8747. That's extension two. You can also send him a text or call him on his cell phone. That's 602-399-3699. We're going to be hearing from Cody and Jared here in a minute about the Vortex, uh, the new LHT scope. Uh, I also want to uh, thank Kuyu Ultralight Hunting. Go to KUIU.com. Kuyu's the gear that I wear on all of my hunts. Uh, Phonescope.com. Use the J Scott promo code, uh, excuse me, J Scott 20 promo code, and you're going to get to save 10% discount there at Phonescope.com. That's the digiscoping device that I use on all of my hunts. Uh, OnXMaps.com. Go to Onyx, use the J Scott 20 promo code. You're going to save 20% there at onyxmaps.com. And I also want to thank Apex Ammunition. They're a new sponsor of the podcast. Go to apexmunition.com to find out more about the TSS, the Tungsten Super Shot. That's what I'm going to be using to shoot all these Gould's turkeys uh, down here in Mexico. We're going to have Apex on the podcast uh, here over the next couple of weeks. Uh, guys, let's get right to this episode. Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. I'm here with Jared Bernstein of Vortex Optics and my friend Cody Nelson, the optics manager at GoHunt.com. How are you guys doing? Good. Jay, thanks for having us today. Excellent. Yeah. Can't this, complain. It's 70 degrees going out. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. It's shorts on in 70 degrees. Well, I think rough February. I saw where some of the mountain states were unburying 38, snow. Yeah. I was talking to another client the other day. Is I mean the flooding and everything they had going on in Idaho. I mean I think we're doing pretty good here. <laughs> Got oranges growing on your yeah, trees out there. Say, yeah, the oranges are still the growing. The grass is green. <laughs> yep. Yes, sir. What do we have in front of us here, Jared? So Jay, this is Excited. the newly released Razor LHT, uh, which stands for Light Hunter Tactical. This is if you're familiar with. If, Two years ago, we put out the original Razor LH, LH. and the, the premise behind it, the concept was, and I brought one with me so you can see both of them together, um, we were trying to make an ultra-light, high-definition, um, feature-packed, but correctly feature-packed for the Hunter offering. Um, massive presence in the industry, obviously now with carbon fiber barrels and stocks and weight is a deal. Um, backcountry hunting is very prominent. So weight has become a huge conversation. Um, what so the, the, the original, the, is it 20, 18, 18 to 20, somewhere nine, in there? 19 and a half nice. uh, ounces. So the new one, um, which we'll, we'll dive into the feature set on that scope here in a sec. So the older, uh, Razor LH, the now discontinued model. Um, some of the complaints were it was a one-inch tube, so the internal travel, the the ability to dial was limited. It wasn't it wasn't um, terrible, to be honest. I shot a bull with that scope, uh, 784 yards, uh, but in all honesty, I didn't dial. I held on the reticle, um, 16 and a half minutes. Um, so that that scope did okay. There was a one and a half to ten. There was a two to ten. Or excuse me, there was a one and a half to eight, a two to ten, and a three to fifteen. And the 3 to 15 did best. Um, very Western hunting sales numbers on that scope. Crystal clear, razor razor glass, um, but a very simple turret set. They're they're as you can see, they're both capped, so capped elevation, capped windage, no zero stop ability. Once you had the turret exposed in your dial, and there was no zero stop ability. So there was just a few complaints or or feedback that came through, and that's where this new LHT has come from. Um, this thing, I'm, I'm very excited about this product. I mean, there's, there's certain products that we, that, you know, we make or whoever that's like, oh, okay, that's a cool product. And then there's some products that like you almost get going too fast talking about cause you're so happy to, to talk about them. And this, this kind of falls into that. So this now features a 30 millimeter tube, the new LHT 30 millimeter tube. 
Um, it has a locking elevation turret. So you lift up, it well, unlocks, it, you it, dial. And the thing I think everybody should know is, is that, that and, I, and I, not to not to interrupt you, but I please the, the, the coolest thing about this when I saw the scope, and that's the first thing I mentioned, was the fact that it is a, it is not a giant, you know, um, quote unquote tactical looking knob. It's it's a lower profile turret, which a lot of a lot of the Western hunters are going to like sliding in and out of scabbards or, you know, being, you know, able to get touched with you know when they're carrying on their shoulder or whatnot. That that was the first thing I noticed, and I was like, right on. This is going to be perfect. No, it's a great. But point. it's exposed. No, it's a great point. Yeah, I appreciate it, you hitting it because yeah. it is an exposed turret, and, but you don't have to deal with retaining a cap anymore. You undo this now. You have to hold. You you know you used to have to hold that that cap somewhere whether it's in your pocket or laying next to you prone or whatever it is so you have an exposed elevation turret you lift up on it it you dial you lock it back down it's phenomenal um this now features what we're calling the rev stop zero stop which is a very intuitive zero stop a lot of zero stops you can get lost in they require a very specific set of timeline when you're zeroing or you can you can then get lost and disengage it and now you have all these problems and you end up either pulling the turret all the way out of the scope and exposing the guts or it not working as a zero stop or it working against you and so it's pretty neat when you zero this thing you shoot so you unlock you dial you shoot right and then when you're zeroed you lock the turret back down and there's this flathead cap on top you remove that flathead cap you pull the external cap off and you slide the supplied ring down into the turret and you rotate and on the ring it's marked rotate with an arrow. So again, even for the Marines out there that can't read, there's arrows, right? <laughs> you put it in there, you spin it down and it engages the zero stop. That ring is the zero stop. And now you just put your cap back on at zero and you're golden. Now another really neat feature, something we've never done, is with each Razor LHT, is included this coupon to oh. Kenton Industries. Yeah, that's a good deal. You send right Kenton their your data, your dope, right? Yep. We've talked about that on previous podcasts, that on previous engagement, dope. You send that to them, and they will supply you via this. Um, each card has a code on it. And via that code, you'll be supplied at no charge a strip that can be wrapped around your turret that will be in yards. So if you don't want to read MOA or MIL, you then have the the ability to have nice. yardages read on your on your turret. So that's kind of the that's one of to me is the biggest upgrade is that zero stop the way that turret interfaces the fact that it's locking you don't have to retain a cap anymore. Um, it's a beautiful thing in a thirty mil tube with plenty of internal internal travel. So the second thing I noticed mm -hmm. is on the uh, on the on the uh, uh, left side there. Yep. So another another huge there's a, upgrade. There's a little button over there. There's a button on it. <laughs> yeah. So another massive another massive upgrade, and it, again, just straight from user feedback, was that having some form of center dot illumination, not entire reticle illumination, but just center dot illumination, yeah, it, would be it, a would without be a, a doubt the 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 center dot, just a single small hairline, if you will, dot, is almost without a doubt the most popular question or reticle that i get asked about does this have this capability and this is gonna this is gonna be a rock star and this does so it's just push button on push button off um, you push it on once it comes on and if you continue to push it without holding it the intensity will adjust so the way that this this particular button works is you push it on let's say it comes on at an intensity of two there are 10 there are 10 power levels within that that motherboard 10 brightness settings right say it comes on at two you push it again quickly goes to three push it in quickly goes to four when you get to 10 it's going to flash that lets you know you're at max and then if you push it again it's going to go to nine it's going to go to eight it's going to go to seven it steps back down when you get to one it's going to flash and then when you push it again it goes to two to three yeah. it works its way back okay. up so when you turn it off you hold it it'll turn off when you push it again, it comes back on at whatever brightness setting it is that you turned it off at. Okay. If you forget to turn it off, it's got a six hour auto shut off. It'll kill itself at six hours and you're and you're golden. Nice. Um so that button is is integrated into the parallax knob. So it is a parallax adjustable scope and it does have the illuminator knob worked into 
worked into that side into the left side of the scope. The right side, the windage is capped. Um, and you know, anybody with a bunch of shooting background knows that typically you do not want to dial for wind. So capped wind, it's really the windage is there to get it zeroed. And then you're going to want to use the reticle from there to, to compensate for wind. So, uh, Cody kind of already hinted on it, but um, there's there's three offerings in this scope. There's an MOA version, a mill version, and then there's a totally separate reticle, a G4 reticle, more of a German-based European-type reticle. Um, that particular scope, that that G4, is at 20.5 ounces. The uh, well, isn't it, isn't that other one also a 50 mil? It is. It is yep. a 50 mil. Yeah, so it's a three to 15 by 50. Yep. The the HSR5I, which is available on an MOA or a mill. Um, that's this one here and that's the three to 15 by 42. That one's going to come in at 19.5 ounces. That's awesome. So for a 30 mil tube with razor HD glass with a locking turret with a, with a solid zero stop, not shims, not, it's a very, very solid, uh, zero stop. And you guys yeah. have heard me talk about this and I've, we've certainly talked about it in other podcasts, but this fits that. This scope fits that niche of guys of that are wanting a scope with a lot of potential, but yet it's not a giant "quote unquote" tactical looking scope. This is, and I and the, these scopes to me that I get so excited because I think it's 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 just it, I don't want to say it's an easy sell, but it's just it does everything that a guy wants to do. You don't have, I mean, it, it's, it's not a big giant tactical scope. And I think when guys are building somewhat, at least weight conscientious rifles. You mean it doesn't look like a big well, yeah, giant it's tactical not, scope? It, it, I mean, it isn't. I mean, I don't think that can be more than 14 inches long. It, 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 when I look at that scope, I, that fits a niche that really there's only a couple scopes out there that really fit that niche in, in, with all those capabilities. And I... I just think that th this is going to be a really good seller. I, I, I'm excited about this scope. Now, with the, with the zero stop deal, it's, it's interesting to note and it's important to note, this ring will set and allow you to dial down slightly. So on the mill version, it'll allow you to go a half a mil past zero. Oh, okay. Okay. And for, for the MOA version, it'll allow you to go um, – one and a quarter MOA past zero, which is important for a lot of these Magnum calibers. A lot of guys, I'm a hundred yard zero guy. I don't care what caliber it is. It's just, that's the math. I know I, I run with it. It doesn't make it completely right. There's a lot, I know a lot of guys that are very, very accurate that zero at two and 300 yards. And so that's where it plays into plays in where, you know, you're planning on shooting 600, but if that buck steps out at 80, you need an option. And so, it does. It does give you some wiggle room there. If you are one of those guys zeroing at two, three hundred, you are going to have a dial down ability. Um, and for the hundred yard guys, going a minute past is not a. I think dialing at a hundred, honestly, I think it's the easiest thing. And when I say that, you're you're making your zero, dead on at a hundred yards. Mm -hmm. For me, I don't care where I'm at. Anywhere in the world, I can always get 100 yards and try to put that on, on paper. I don't have to worry about a 200-yard zero, which then makes me, let's, you know, say you're using a 300 wind mag, 180-grain bullet. You know, all of a sudden you're at, you know, 1.3 inches high. Well, what a pain in the butt it is to go measure 0.3. I mean, you know, are you off? Or, but if you're dead on at 100, you're dead on at 100. And I, I just have always thought that that's an incredibly easy thing to remember. And with my given caliber choices, most of the time, if you're dead on at 100, pretty much from 0 to 200 or maybe even a little farther, depending on the caliber, it's just dead on. From from 0 to 2, 225, 250 maybe, kill them. Well, with these flat shooting calibers, yeah, I mean, the technology is incredible. Some of these, I mean, this particular rifle in front of us is in 6.5 PRC. It's, a, it's just a Absolutely. laser beam. It's a laser beam. Um, but it's just a very premium premium feature packed offering it's going to be on the shelf um the hsr5 scopes are going to be on the shelf at 9.99 the uh, g4 perfect. reticle is slightly more expensive it's just going to barely break that thousand dollar mark um and that's what you're going to find on the shelf for the listeners keep in mind there's always msrp and then there's the price you're going to find it on the shelf 
the MSRP on this scope is is significantly higher, but the the street price is going to be right at a thousand. What is your bucks. what is your total MOA or mill up down at elevation? Let me look it up for you because I've had this scope for all of an hour, and let's not quote it the wrong way. Uh, while I'm doing that, another one of those premium features is that the ocular ring locks. So once you set that ocular to your eye, it has a locking ring that allows you to, to lock that down so that if, God forbid, somebody else gets behind your gun and then you get your gun back, it's not all cattywampus would be the word that my mom would use. <laughs> um, and talk about why that's important to you. Yeah, so the, the ocular lens needs to be set to the shooter. It's not a on the fly adjustment. It's a one time adjustment. So it doesn't, the, the magnification, Oh, I'm shooting farther. I need to adjust it again. No, you're adjusting the back end of the scope one time. And the, the best way that I find to do that is to put a white piece of paper, printer paper in front of that, in front of that scope at full power. It's an old deal that a Marine scout sniper taught me and put it out there give it a little bit of light in between the objective lens and the white piece of paper and move that ocular lens till the reticles crystal clear at max power and then we used to wrap electrical tape around them excuse me um now you have electrical tape on your scope in the arizona sun sometimes they'll melt you got this piece of tape Dude. hanging down yeah it's it's a problem but it's not as big of a problem as your ocular lens not being focused or getting bumped or getting adjusted by your yeah, buddy who right. doesn't know what he's doing exactly so this having a locking ring especially and Cody made the comment when we brought it in. He said, wow, it's really tight. And I said, yeah, I, I cranked it oh, down because really? I didn't want you to mess with it. Exactly. You know? so, so in other words, uh, when you pull it up to your eye, it's in focus. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Cody, answer your question. Elevation adjustment. You have a, f a total of 80 minutes internal nice. okay. uh, or 23 mils okay. respectively. Nice. Uh, so it's a, it's pretty significant. Um, Is there a rotation indicator? Or is it just... There's not, like on the Razor Gen 2s where that right? piece protrudes, no. Okay. No. Um, you know, when you start getting into that stuff, and it's we, we do it on other scopes, we're certainly capable of doing it, but you're adding weight, significant weight. That device is actually very heavy. Um, and you're adding significant manufacturing costs to start putting those kind of features in there. And we had a very specific set of parameters we are trying to hit on this thing, and that was sub $1,000 on the shelf or right at it, $999, right? Uh with with the features that were the most asked for and the zero stop being one of them the 30 mil tube being another and then the center dot illumination topping off the the three major changes to that to that scope in your opinion what impact is this going to have on the western market i think it'll be giant there there were a lot of guys that loved the concept of the original razor lh but didn't pull the trigger on it because it was lacking one of or two of these prominent features that we're talking about and now and, and i had my own set of complaints or you know suggestions or wish lists with the original lh and i loved it i hunted with it um quite a bit and like i said i killed that bullet just under 800 yards and it was an effective unit but now it's a whole lot more effective uh, so we're we're certainly very excited to see to see what this thing does and the pre-orders and the response has been incredible and so i'm excited to see kind of where it goes it's the right time of year to to be releasing it you know as we talked about arizona applications just starting to close it's all it's all falling in the line well, pretty I just, well i think this is a clear you know that vortex is listening to their customers and listening to the you know like you know, these are the bells and whistles that we want, and this is what we want to see. And I, I think it's a, it's a, uh, it's just a clear response to that, and that that's awesome. So if you just if you just zeroed Cody, and for the yep, listeners, I you gotcha. can't see what I'm doing here, but Cody's sitting in front of this rifle. I'm gonna start over for you, Jay. So this is how easy it is to to get that zero stop engaged. If Cody were to have just zeroed this rifle, okay. We take a flathead screwdriver to the elevation turret and we turn this flathead cap and we pull that out. And there, I gotcha. you, there it goes. Now the the supplied ring here, when you pull this turret cap off, the supplied ring just goes in. And when you spin that down, when it stops, now your zero stops engaged. You're zeroed. All you have to do is take this cap, 
put it back on at zero, right? Right. Which should be, I'm guessing, from this side of the <laughs> this side of the table. But you are right. Hold on, right there. Perfect. Okay. So we're zeroed, and now it's a matter of just putting this flathead cap back in. And now this scope will dial past one and a quarter minutes to allow you to go down if you have to, but your zero stop is engaged and you're done. That's, that's pretty all, slick. That's all there is to it. And so it's not this big giant process. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly you. right on one and a quarter. Interesting. No, that's great. And it does have, for anybody asking, it does have the... Uh, very positive clips to it, um, but, I, but I expected that from the razor anyway. Um, it does have the the MOAs marked, so you have the when you know like the one through what is it fourteen, and then once you hit the second ro uh, rotation, it starts uh, to count up again. Right. So that's uh, yeah, that is a nice little package of a scope. Period. And the question has come up, you know, with that tape. Well, if I don't want to dial back past a minute and a quarter. You know, can I set it at my yardages? Absolutely. You just move the tape a minute and a quarter the other direction. So it's very, it's it's a very simple, intuitive system. Yep. Uh, no, which I'm excited awesome. about because we have some very good zero stops within the line, and some of them can get quite confusing for people if the steps aren't followed right out of the box. This one, if the zero, if you for some reason mess this up, your one flathead, you remove the disc, you re-zero, you put the disc back in. You're done. And it's yeah, this very, is very um, simple. Or if you're switching to a different caliber, a different gun, or you know something goes down on a hunt, and you got to use a different gun. You know, for people listening, it's it, it, and it is. It's the typical, um, you know, it's that satin black. Um, I just like the fit and finish of it all together. Period. It's a lot better looking than you are. D this is very true. Trust me. Um, yeah, and it's really like I mean, if you look, it, you know, compared to the other. I don't know, Jay, if you want to get some of that. It's just a smidge just, bigger. Well, yeah, just, I mean, it's literally, I mean, you're getting way more out of it, but just at a fraction. And at, su at sub 20 ounces, that's just a. Yeah, I just don't you think You start it gets comparing feature set, it's, it's going to be a hard one. Yeah, it's going to be a hard uh, one to beat. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that's, uh, there's a lot of scope in that in that package right there. How do you think this is going to be received by the sheep hunters? I think it'll be interesting. I think there's some brands that that own that world to a point, some of which I'll argue why to, you know, as far as there's a, there's a contest on look at me and, and price point and all that. I think that if you were to compare feature set and they were just all painted red and I think it would be a hard scope for somebody not to pick. Um, well, but, but I, I think that this scope, honestly, you know, aside from the sheet, I mean, it, I guess it just depends on who's, you know, some guys are building, you know, six pound rifles and some guy. I, I just think it comes back to, you know, what's the most I can get for this small a package? Right. I think the power um, selection, the three to 15 you know, coupled with a 42 millimeter bell, I think that that, I mean, you know, that used to be kind of, you know, I'll go into the, it used to be the four to 14 loophole and, you know, those kind of things. And I think that this three to 15 power, it has a low enough and wide enough field of view at the low end and in in it, in, in enough power that I will tell you that most of the people that are calling and that are dying the wool sheep guys that are going a lightweight, I, I, those are not your. I, I'm sorry, those are not your you know thousand yard guys. Mm -hmm. They may be, but most of those guys want a gun that'll shoot somewhere between three and six hundred yards, right. and this and is, be nails. Right. And I, I, this scope is way more capable than than six hundred yards, but this is the kind of scope that they're looking for. And Just that from a size standpoint, it's awesome. Right. And that reticle speaks to that world too. Having, having uh, quite a bit of adjustment, quite a bit of subtensions built in within the reticle, but also having that fine center, non-complicated center dot 
it's not it's not a continuous crosshair through the center, and that can that can lend for some very simple. Well, viewing that, and that's what and I was going to say is is that this reminds me of just a straight German number four, because you do you have the thicker you know you know on the edges, but this one does not have anything at the twelve o'clock, and quite frankly, I, I don't you don't need anything at the twelve o'clock, mm-hmm. so. Yeah, I, I I think this is going to do really really well. I'm so, excited about this. So film. there is going to be, and and for the Jay, listeners, I'm see that, I'm but. pulling some reticles up on an iPad here for for Jay and Cody. But that is what the German number four in the three to fifteen by fifty will look like. Oh, okay, I got you. Right, so we're used to that, and the nice. center dot is illuminated red to show that it does light up. But obviously, you can turn that off. Yeah. Um, whereas the the HSR 5i is somewhat German number four esque, like you hit on. Yep. But it's also quite a usable subtended out reticle. Yeah, but but that's not obnoxious and too. Fu- I mean, it's that that'll that'll do really well. Right. With 32 minutes available within the reticle Correct. itself, so you have 80 minutes available within the turret, 32 minutes in the reticle. You have a 19. 0.5 ounce scope with a hundred yeah. plus guys minutes that, of availability. Uh, guys will really like the the ability for follow up shots with the with how distinctive those lines are. This is going to all be around a thousand bucks. It is. It'll be on the shelf at nine ninety nine. Price yeah, pricing is done. And that's such a you know. There's other scopes that we have in that line that that you know are. You know they're right at that price point, and that's such a big price point. Um, you know when I get the questions every day, it's like, hey, I, you know, I want to be right here, and I don't want to spend any any more. You know, and but can I, you think of a scope in that price point in not, that weight not, with that zero stop with a locking turret? The locking turret to me is is kind of the feat of engineering in the weight because yeah, it typically it, isn't a, is a heavier mechanism. It's. I just, yeah, I think is, our engineers absolutely crushed this project, yeah. and I'm excited to see the response. Yeah, I just, where, where's mine? Where's this is mine? Where's yours? Yeah, <laughs> where I, I'm gonna. There's I'm not gonna. a pile of money in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you're saying you can be bribed? That's what oh, you're I, saying. yeah, everything's for sale. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd yeah. probably let it go for sixty five hundred. Yeah, no, I think this is, uh, this is, this is good. I'm very excited about this. It's this is and again, it's all about making giving people choices. And and we keep broadening that that you know that palette if you will and and being able to give people choices and in Vortex is is you're doing a good job listening. So, this is going to be a, a good one. That's a sign of a good company that will listen to customer feedback and be able to adapt and then you know take that feedback and produce something so quickly bring it to market well and it's it's easy to say i mean I, i'm you know everybody else obviously warranties there but you have the vortex warranty with the electronics and everything there's there's people that just absolutely are going to go you know you know what bat crazy over it you know what i mean hopefully that's certainly so, the plan they're yeah. they're selling that way already so i don't see it slowing down jared that's i really appreciate you bringing this to our attention and Cody, I look forward to getting the feedback from you, um, from yep. the customers on this. And Yeah, I want to um, put it to, through its paces here quickly. <laughs> You're welcome to it. Quickly. <laughs> it's a shooter for sure. I got a nice little 280 Ackley out there. It's a, looking like it'll go on really well. Still, Jay, do you see money in front of me? No, I yeah. still don't. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, thank you again for uh, um, letting us have this opportunity, but I think this is a... This is going to be a fun scope to, to sell. I can. No, exactly. Thank yeah, you both. I we can't appreciate wait to, the, the to put it on my own rifle, but I, I, I'm, I, this is going to be a good one. Well, thanks to Vortex Optics and you, Jared, Cody. Uh, listeners out there, if you guys have questions, 702-847-8747, extension 2. You can also text Cody directly on his cell phone, 602-399-3699, and uh, get, get your questions answered and uh, get this in your hands and give it a try and I look forward to seeing the feedback. Um, Jay, guys, thanks, thanks for coming on. You know, Jay, thank you for the opportunity. Yep.